Hi guys, welcome back to Transitions. It's me, Raven, and we're going to be talking about um, the Disclosure documentary on Netflix. It came out in 2020, I believe, earlier this month, or I'm not aware, but yeah, 2020. And just from the, the pre screen, seeing the title and the just a brief intro, this documentary leading trans creatives and thinkers, blah blah blah. Hollywood analysis on the impact of the trans community. What I already have a, a slight disdain with is that it's two white presenting females and one racially ambiguous presenting possible trans man. So, yeah. Alright, so we're going to hit play now and this is going to be itty bitty by itty bitty my opinion my first thing watching because I've not watched it been recommended by persons on the um Jerry the Crime Butterfly page and we're going to see how this um goes so you're going to get my first time real raw unfiltered reaction of this documentary slash film Is, 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 is possible this is one of them. They got the other thing where 
you was a real brick looking man, like big shoulders, full beard and whatever, big chest. And then you transition, so you trying to be overly feminine to erase everything of masculine that was before. But this is a big problem. Still, like the got people that do um, comedy skits and do very bad drag impersonations and there's just instead of saying that it's, it's a drag performance or a drag mock-up this this because of the narrative of being a trans woman or just saying I'm a woman as opposed to saying it's a female impersonator a female impersonator you know it's drag queen woman is trans so this Moza could have a bar shotgun jawline like he laying down concrete And then was what what going on with the bra situation, like the brass area, like what it is? It looked like your tap toilet tissue and stuff in there. Oh. So they went out of their way, or sometimes people go out of their way to intentionally portray transgenders as ugly and unappealing. Mm-hmm. That representation. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Did I never see this? Oh, and then your mother in 2011 had an episode a, a, a woman, a female presenting, and she looked good as shit. She got into a, a man's bathroom, and man said, This is a man's bathroom. And she said, She know, sprout open she legs, I'll hike up she dress to pee on a urinal. My girl, we're gonna go into the cubicle. That's actually one of the first things I thought when I saw it as well. I was like, The so trans woman don't do that. Exactly, it's very unrealistic. But then again, the media portrays these things for comedic relief and being absolutely This ain't funny at all. I'm a dude. I, I, I can't remember the, the movie just now. It's something about war, about male and war or something. Male war, right? Like, the woman asks he, if he could talk like a woman and he do some very awful voice. Impersonation. And she asks if he can't sound no more feminine and he just dropped back into a real baritone no like it's always been a point of how do I explain it like you was always the, like they say you get clocked by your voice and Adam's apple how big your hands is so like they got things that's like supposed Tranny warnings, like you could look at somebody and think shoulders, yes, like a linebacker. <laughs> but they got some men that backs broader than mine, and they've got vaginas. They got some men that voices heavier than mine. They got women that got more, huh? Yeah, they pregnant. She's she's a good example of this. She definitely gives she back broader than mine too. <laughs> <laughs> and then the got women that got as much beard as Sadiq. That's true. Alright, so Laverne Pot is talking about black comedians putting on a dress and making a score about the thing being trans. I talked about. This is already aggravating my spirit. Like I don't, I, I, 15 minutes in, I want to stop watching it. I understand because the, the point of of trans history, we've been the butt of the joke for however long. But um, still very visible, even if it's slightly misrepresented. Very visible. My. She also said something about when she had transitioned early, like because of all these things they were seeing on TV, it made your transition a point of laughter that people were seeing this burst out into laughing or whatever. And Barbie, listen, when you if you transition in public, like I did, from boy to girl, they will see you slowly change. react longer, you will start wearing nails, you will start going from, from baggy pants and shirts to like skinny jeans, skinny neck shirts, whatever. And I never had like a full beard, but sometimes people would, you would see a little stubble over your body box for shaving and people would, like, that's a man. Even though, like, physically presenting, it was still 
mostly masculine, but there were people that would run up near you and laugh over in your ear. That's a bullet. Oh, we fuck is that? And I am like, it's not happened to me very often because growing up in Temple knew me and know that I used to fight a lot. So that was a risk. Because early in my transition, I was very aggressive. Like, very aggressive. Still so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny how when you say that, like, the, the little um, jingle was like, be aggressive. Be, uh, be aggressive <laughs> over my head. I'm like, no. I but I, I, yeah, I, I can't uh, imagine how it was for other people that thing where you have to deal with that. Walking in public, people just run up, are laughing, are making a whole big scene, and, it, and again, this what happens to today. The uh, organization, the LGBT organization in America, and it published a study, and the findings were. 80% of the U.S. population don't personally know a trans individual, and I could say probably that's the same thing for the majority of our babies. Um, and if you do know them, chances are it's somebody that makes clothes. That's the easiest reference to how people know trans women as seamstresses. Obviously, for safety reasons, um, for, for ignorance, all kind of other things, but definitely, the media has taught the non-LGBT population how to react to trans people and how. How to address them in the not correct, not polite way. It, 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 at this point, it's beyond discriminatory because common sense. When you meet somebody, hi, what your name? How are you? Or you a man. Visibly more trans women than men. That is 
true, although in the world there are an equal amount following in Barbados, there are definitely more trans women than trans men. Sometimes, again, you try not to police people's gender identity and their life, but there are trans men who have not identified as trans men yet or do not openly identify as trans men because it's easier to identify as a bunch less me and a gal job in Barbados. So it's at some point there was um, a few rape scenes and that was one of them was to a trans man. Corrective rape is what they call it, corrective rape where men, heterosexual men, physically and sexually assault trans men because they still have their genetic parts and yeah. I don't talk about rape. Ugh. Um, and then women see women see trans women and say, oh wow, well, this pussy will make you straight, this is the rape pussy for you. So the same thing corrective rape goes both ways for trans men and trans women. Ugh, unfortunately is a thing it still happens and then that even ties into um Conversion therapy. Um, how religion is used to fix you. So that that whole corrective rape thing, it still happens, and it has happened in Barbados. There was a one time it happened in Barbados, and it was in the paper. Um, the nation had apologized for it after, but the story was in Panama House. It said. Um, gentleman gets a taste of his own medicine and I still don't understand how editors and proofreaders and journalists publish that print it, like write the story sent to the editors and nobody thought to scrap that story but again probably this is a bunch of fallacies and a bunch of fuckery so I don't expect anything that's from the media because the media is always sensitive as a story all these salacious topics and they're always misleading like when I was in the paper when I was arrested and I went to the attorney general about the inhumane treatment of the police and whatever and there was a picture of me and another activist handing the letter to the attorney general and the headline at the bottom says gays flee um, I know home talk prefacing the, the story about um Beijing LGBT persons fleeing into Canada and becoming refugees and, and, and the, the picture with the writer of what was happening with me and the title in big green text had nothing to do with each other so the media always sensationalized stories and, and twist them to suit themselves sell papers um white trans women a white trans women became the, the face of the movement after several years of other trans women black white Puerto Rican, Asian, having a sex change and being visible activists and visible members in the community. So, so Christine Jorgensen, or whatever she name was, yeah, she had become this actress and she was known for having a sex change and, and all of the, the stories around her were so positive compared to other trans women before, trans women that were always pegged as sex workers, prostitutes, Asian positive, whatever. Um, um, the disclosure thing also heavily focused on surgeries. Now, now, surgeries are always a point of contention because people like to justify or validate things with your body. So how we get breasts, I pay for them, not Dr. Bridge Law, just so you know. Um, you got a penis or a vagina? Yes, I got a vagina. It's work the same way. I don't know, like your boyfriend has gonna come and test it out. Oh, you still got a penis? Yes. How big it is? Bigger than yours and your man one. All these things is, is, is the is the stories that I just tell people. Um, <clears throat> when they ask me these rude questions. Um. 
raise a bones, ugly, as as a as a man, as a woman in a dress. So it's always casting non-trans people to play trans roles and it's perpetuate this narrative that we're only men in wigs and dresses and that's obviously not the case like there are processes you go through there there are challenges you overcome and disheartening is is the easiest word to find right now without me cursing and getting into a whole tantrum but You want positive representation. It's the same thing like if you were doing a movie and there was an HIV positive character or a person, you don't want to perpetuate the, the, the stereotype that the person is gonna die as some different that got HIV. That's not true. You don't want the person to think that sharing a cup with the system of the a stranger that could catch HIV through saliva that is not true so the same thing goes for the the representation of trans people you want to be on the the right narrative you want to be the right representation so i find when it comes to positively or accurately representing trans people hollywood oftentimes does not want to give the correct representation to keep that false narrative that just men in dresses, just men in wigs, not real women, can't give birth, that kind of shit. And just none of the government movies, just like, you still can't give birth, so, see, don't make sense. Um, another point in the movie was, um, cartoons, and they referenced Bugs Bunny, and everything Bugs Bunny was in, um, character female presenting Bugs Bunny was always desired by um oh, Alma cool. Fudd and your know, Samity Sam and the other characters but as soon as the wig came off at the end of the scene they were going to this rage or I'm going to kill the rabbit they're gonna kill Bugs Bunny and again I go back into the the, the, the the negative stereotype that as soon as a man finds out a woman is trans he goes to kill her he wants to destroy her, he wants to harm her in the worst way because his fragile masculinity has been challenged, questioned, or put under a lens. And again, that's not true. There are men that are specifically attracted to trans women, so that narrative is problematic because then um, when you and your partner get into an argument, Obviously, don't think your partner is going to hack you up, kill you, whatever. So, the, the Bugs Bunny reference was only the only positive representation, mostly positive representation of trans women, female presenting in um, the, the Disclosure movie. And um, it's interesting because it's a cartoon, it's supposed to be softer, it's supposed to be more like hearted. So, and again, for children, it was when it's a child's cartoon, like Looney Tunes, whatever. So, you're, you're putting that representation there to help guide children to be more open and accepting as opposed to having this raw, adverse reaction to trans people in the media. as opposed to 
the Japanese version where they were lovers. Uh, but yeah. Um, uh, the last thing that I'm going to talk about that disclosure reference, because like, um, her name is Jeff Richards, and she was talking about um, how, well, 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 she and Candace King were talking about parents and how some parents were accepting of their trans children, trans youth, and there was a, it was a forum for parents of trans kids, and they were just talking and sharing and stuff. And I've said this before, my mother is my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. My mother is definitely someone special, and my mother definitely made it easy for me to, to, to transition. I have family support, especially from the person that gave life to me. Because usually people say, in their ignorance, I lost a son, I lost a daughter when they transitioned from male to female, female to male. And it is interesting that my mother didn't say that stupid shit about she lost a son and whatever she lost a child. Like my mother still got two fucking children. She first showed just make a progressive life change and my mother is very happy that I'm alive, healthy. My mother is very happy that I'm in a relationship that the man don't burst my kind, choked me out, left me scarred, bloody and bruised. My mother is happy that I can walk around and travel and not have people like chase me to assault me or I go to the police because I was shot at or threatened walking through my neighborhood. So it's interesting that some of the persons and again all these parents in this forum were white. Our people are usually more accepting to these things. I wish that they had some black um, parents of trans kids, but again, more representation of whites in the thing, although people may think it, it had an equal amount of black representation, it, it wasn't. Media wise. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Uh, and again, white trans persons are easier to pass for, because the white, they got that hair texture, skin they don't have the predominant um, athletic bodies like black people do so so this is easy for people to pass and again passing privilege doesn't always make it right because their whiteness they will always cling to as opposed to being trans so they have to pick their whiteness or being trans, they will live. Just like in America and the UK, when you're black and trans, you got a double-edged sword. You're gonna dead if you're black, you're gonna dead if you're trans. So, in Barbados, it's more obviously black trans women, I guess, there obviously probably are some white trans women in Barbados, but I haven't seen them. Probably know them, but don't know that the trans live in the south because again, it's easy for them to blend in. But yes, that was my thing on um, disclosure. Um, slightly triggered. Definitely, I'm not sure if I'm going to be watching it again anytime soon. But yeah, so that was my um, view on the disclosure film on Netflix transitions and 